make things a little more comfortable, I put down this cardboard. When I'm doing these things, I try to uh, use Nurdle gloves. And that's because they're pretty durable, a lot more durable than latex. And I already have these for when I dump and do other things that are nasty. Uh, plus, once you do a greasy job or a dirty job like this, you have dirt in your fingernails and everything. Sometimes grease won't come out for a really long time. Anyway, this makes it a whole lot simpler just to pull them off when you're done. I've removed the wheel and I set it up against the other wheel over there. And I want to take this chance to show you how I jack the fifth wheel up um, for situations like this. If you notice here, a lot of people recommend that you jack it on the frame. But the thing is with this, as you can see there's belly material on the frame there. And that presents a possible slipping hazard there. Plus if you get too close, there's this two inch uh, square spacer that is used specifically on grand on these grand design models to allow for a 16 inch wheel conversion so this part's really for the people in the forum but um, I'm not an advocate for jacking on the frame anywhere you know see your frame goes in a good ways before it hits the T and you know you just I'd hate for someone to get, you know, put it a little too far out and break through the belly and the thing come crashing down. So what I do is I jack it up just high enough to get the wheel off at the U-joint area there. And all the way to the fifth wheel is right here on this part of the axle. And this part of the axle is thicker than the other part of the axle down there. At least that's my understanding. So that's what I do. I jack it right there, right or wrong, that's what I'm doing. And I put also an additional safety measure in case this bus, I'd rather bend the axle than to potentially fall or do really bad damage to the rest of the RV. I think an entire axle assembly is maybe five or six hundred dollars. So if it falls, I'd rather pay the five hundred five or six hundred dollars. The first thing you want to do is remove this cap here, this grease cap. Uh, it's got a rubber ring there and that's for quick access to the easy lube function that I will never use. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take this uh, rubber mallet and pop on it like this as I turn it. And it'll separate from that and I can take it off. After you pull the cover off, the next thing you got to do is uh, remove the cotter pin. The cotter pin is keeping this castle nut from turning. And see, you can even see it's turning a little bit but with just my finger. But what you have to do is remove that cotter pin. Uh, but right now we're getting into the greasy part. And everything you touch is going to be really greasy. So I always bring, um, not always, but it's not like I do this all the time. But I got uh, lots of Walmart bags and paper towels there and I'm going to wipe as I go and stuff in and uh, continue to keep my hands as grease free and my gloves as grease free as possible as I do this. So I'm going to remove the cotter pan and the castle nut. Okay this is the cotter pan that's kind of off to one side here. Before I get started I wanted to tell you guys this. I am not an expert at this. I choose to do this on my own and I do not recommend doing this unless you know what you're doing. Also, if I am your only source for you doing this, then you are wrong. Start over, do a lot of research, determine whether or not you can do this. I do not want to be responsible for anyone getting hurt. Okay. So, let's take this off. There we go. Cut it in the trash right now. Next, you remove this castle nut.
right behind this castle nut there should be a washer and right behind the washer is the front part of the bearing now there's the washer right there it was held in onto the castle nut with grease uh, bearing is trying to come out. Normally I just grab the hub and pull it, but it's trying to slip out before I set things down, so I'm going to go ahead and pull it on out. There you go. And I'm going to put these over to the side here because we're going to repack those and clean them up and then repack them. Clean the excess grease off. greasy bit and now relatively hand cleans I'm going to hold the outside of this hub and pull this off and now you have the hub along with uh, the brake assembly there on top of the axle tube so now um, what I want to do is um, I'm replacing these this whole brake assembly which is held on by these five nuts here I'm replacing the whole thing with Ford adjusting brakes. And I'll show you what that looks like. Alright, side by side here. See if you can see that. And, uh, okay. I'll bring it in front of... This has this uh, cable here. And the other one doesn't. And it has a spring that... Uh, comes around to this metal piece underneath here and as the brakes are applied somehow this these ingenious folks have get it where it ratchets this uh, tightening wheel here by itself on adjustment well I've got it here I'll show you here it says left hand here and it also says left hand here that that's a good indicator um, found this out by doing research on these assemblies the longer shoe always faces the rear of the fifth wheel that's how you can tell uh, if you've got it on the right side or not because really left hand what does that mean left hand if you're facing the front of the fifth wheel the back of the fifth wheel you know it's just kind of a confusing uh, way to put it so the longer shoe, the, the, the metal pieces are the same size, but the brake pad itself is longer facing the back. So, anything else on these? Um, you don't want to touch any, th any uh, part of the pad with greasy hands or the brake magnet or anything like that you want to keep from doing that so be careful when you put that on when you change these out there's a wire here that goes to the electric brakes the electric brakes energize they come back around here and they energize the magnet which causes it to slap up against the inside of the drum that friction makes it from what i understand makes makes it push these pads out so the magnet grabs the drum, the drum turns, the turning is what causes this to go. So that's my understanding of the concept and again my understanding might not be completely true but uh, I think I'm giving you good advice there. So now we're going to remove these and replace the whole assembly. Okay before I want, removed it I wanted to tell you a couple of the sockets I'm using. Um, this is a half inch brake bar uh, and the lug nut is a 19 millimeter and that's what I've used. I don't know if there is a uh, non-metric version that fits maybe a little better but I'm using metric. These are the impact wrenches I have or sockets I have that fit the brake bar half inch um, size and uh, the nuts here uh, are 14 millimeter. So I'm going to remove these and I'm not going to bore you with taping that whole thing. Ok, 
Okay, what I want to show you here is when you pull this assembly out, you'll notice that the wires will be attached here. And you got to think here. Um, you can see not only attached here, uh, they also go into the axle, which I'm assuming goes all the way over to the other side. Uh, this wire here. Uh, and then they also engage here. And um, my guess is that they go up and above and over to the other tire. Uh, so, or to the harness, the trailer harness, some in some fashion. But what you want here is, in case you want to reuse this later, since it's still a good assembly, uh, you want to leave some wire here. So I'm going to cut it here and leave enough wire where I can splice the new hub into it right there. Okay, I've cleaned up the component area here, spindle, and uh, cleaned it with this. And I also stripped the wires that I cut here. And now I'm going to attach the other brake uh, assembly on there and um, attach the wires, secure them with wire nuts and uh, electrical tape. Okay, now I've got the assembly on. You can see here the new assembly is put in place. I still need to, to attach the wires here. But uh, what I'm doing now is I'm torquing the uh, screws here, uh, the nuts for the, the bolts here, to 50 foot-pounds using a clicker-type torque wrench. So I'll do all of those. I want to show you this, too. Um, this is one of the uh, bracket bolts, and it was buggered up. I got to trying to undo it and it was just fighting me the whole way. So when they tightened it, they tightened it cross threaded and they just buggered the dickens out of it. So what I did was I bought, uh, anticipating that this is probably done on the other ones, I bought right here grade 5 automotive nuts and bolts to replace it. You can get it about inch to inch and a quarter, grade 5. In this case, three-eighths inch by about an inch to inch and a quarter. And I also put a lock washer on the on the uh, front, and it's uh, it's not a press-in type on the back, so you have to hold uh, another wrench. But the only thing this does is it, it keeps this plate attached and stable. Okay, I've got the two wires coming from the brake assembly and the, the wires I cut. What I do when I attach is I fan the wires out and these don't matter which one's connected to which from my reading. So you fan it out, each one's fanned out. That way you can put the, the small individual little wire strands and in, intermixed, intermingled amongst each other here. And then you twist it and then you put a wire nut on it as such. I'm doing this without gloves because it's a little more delicate. And the same with the other one. Put the wire nut on. Then all you have to do is put the electrical tape on and I'll do that next. Okay, when I tape, I start with one on the on the wires, then I wrap it around the wires, then up over the nut, the wire nut, and then I do both sides, then I wire them together, I mean tape them together, and then I tape them back here, that way the stress point here can stress on this first and it'll be underneath the fifth wheel, so the water it, that could hit it or anything that could hit it corrosively will be from uh, the road splashing up. Hopefully, uh, that'll do the trick for me. Next thing we need to do is remove the old brake seal. And this, every time you repack bearings, you should replace this brake seal. As a matter of fact, uh, Leopard 
is I'm going through and, and the forum I belong to is going through some issues with a lot of these leaking and my wheel right there I found it leaking and really if you look at this that is splash that is beginning this truck this uh, vehicle has not really been anywhere um, yet at all less than 200 miles from the dealership here and then one camp kind of back so this I know would have ended up doing the same thing but anyway you take the seal out and behind it are the bearings so I'm going to remove those and uh, then uh, we'll go from there Hope you can see it. Oh man, there's a whole lot of grease up in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go wash it with Dawn and yep, soap and water. I'm going to get the dirt dauber pieces out here, the brake dust off, and all the excess grease from the other grease type out. And then when I'm done with that, I will spray it with cleaner and uh, get it all ready for new bearing, packed bearings. Okay, these are them after being cleaned up. And there's no grease residue on there. It feels rough. There are small remnants of dirt dauber there, but there's nothing traveling in that area. So it's all traveling in here and let's see my finger here in here so that's it for the hub assembly is cleaned you can see down in there and since you can now see that there's a light here I got caught after dark so I'm having to use artificial lighting underneath my carport here to finish up the job because I do not want this axle on this jack stand overnight. Next thing to do is to put the bearings back in with the seal and uh, the first part of that is this right here. This is a bearing packer and I will show you how that works. Okay, so take off the dust cover. That's all it is, just a dust cover. You unscrew this. So it's got little holes in it. It's even got grease starting to come out. You take your bearing, which in this case is the rear. You drop that in there. Put, the, put this back on and you press until you see grease coming out. grease packed all in there now push it for extra measure force greased and these are ready to go back in the drum And now to put in another seal after I get cleaned up. So. Okay, you put a new seal on top. And what I see people doing is putting a board over it and using the rubber mallet. Popping it here until it seats flush. That's what I'll do now. The grease seal is in place. Well lubricated rear bearing behind the grease seal there and I put some grease on the outside here you got to be careful uh, I think it's my belief if you put too much here as you're pushing it on you could push grease back behind the seal and uh, lead to potential contamination on the other braking components so now 
put the hub on. Okay, now that we've uh, got the hub on, I'm going to use a screwdriver and I'm going to put some extra grease in here gently. Just using a flathead screwdriver. I want some extra grease in here, but I don't want to use the Zerk fitting to add it. really gently doing this. I don't want to scrape anything at all. No metal on metal. Not that it would scar it at this easy level, but all right. Now then, I'm going to clean off my packer a little bit and I'm going to put it back down in the packer holder, grease holder and screw this there you go and put in the front bearing small side down and I'm going to pack down any, I don't think it will. Yep. And I'm going to take and compress it, forcing grease into And I'll show you. That's what it looks like. And I'm going to grab it with the extra grease and everything and put it right in the hole. Alright, like that. Alright. Next thing I'm going to do is put the washer on, the castle nut, and the cotter, a, a new cotter pin. Always put a new cotter pin in because you've stressed the metal pulling it out. So I'm going to get cleaned up and, uh, well, before I do that, I'll go ahead and put washer on and the castle nut. The next part is pretty important I believe. You want to make sure that the bearings are seated on the races properly and uh, that requires a little bit of finagling and I can't be all greased up for that so I'm going to turn you off get these gloves off and show you what's next. With my wrench here, I'm going to tighten this castle nut while spinning the drum. And what it'll do is it push to make sure that it's snug up against. I don't want it this tight. So once it's snug and you've seated everything inwards, then you undo it by hand. Or you undo it. And then all you do is you tighten this. See how I've got it here loose? All you do is you tighten it just enough so the cotter pin can enter. And I believe that is just about perfect. Right there, and I'll put another I'll put a cotter pin in, and then uh, I do have to take my gloves off for this, and I'll show you that. Okay, you can see the cotter pin's in place. It's bent around. It's between the castle slot here and here, through the end, and wrap back around so the cap will fit on. And that's what I'll put it on and tap it in place with my rubber mallet. All 
All right, the next thing to do is, after the dust cap's put on, is to put the wheel back on. And while I had the wheel off, I cleaned it and uh, wiping off the excess 303 here. This is 303 protectant that I sprayed it with. Good stuff. Better than Armol, in my opinion. Um, not getting paid by these guys. So I'm wiping off the uh, X-play, excess splatter from the 303 right now. So now, put the wheel back on. And after you get the wheel on, you need to torque it into place. And uh, I'll do that. When you torque, these, you need to get one of these braking torque wrenches and the torque uh, is in three stages. You start at um, 20 to 25 and you do it you start here and then across and then next to it and back across and then next to it and back across so that you're tightening it down and across from each other uh, to 20 to 25 degree, uh, 20 to 25 foot pounds. Uh, of course, the wheel can't be moving while you're doing that. And after that, you start the pattern again at 50 to 60 foot-pounds. And then the third and final one is 90 to 120. And uh, that will set it in place. I'll go ahead and tell you what the manual says, too. It says after 10 miles, you should check the torque. After 50 miles, uh, let's see, 10, I think it's like 10, 30, and 50, you recheck the torque. Uh, so it's it's good to have one of these torque uh, wrenches and they operate by screwing up. But anyway, get you one of these. I'll put these on and uh, torque it and uh, while the wheel is free I'm going to show you how to adjust the brakes so that you get the initial the initial um, friction needed as the starting point for the Ford adjusting, automatic Ford adjusting, which is the type of brakes I have, Ford adjusting brakes. Okay, on these Ford adjusting brakes, I'm a little bit out of breath, but you've got two holes, and what you have to do is, because the way Dexter designed these, you have to lift up on that metal plate that is the Ford adjusting part that holds the wheel, uh, spikes on that wheel, adjusting wheel. You have to lift that up to free the. Uh, let's see if you can see it in there. See if you can see that in there, that metal plate right there. You got to lift that up with a, uh, well, with a screwdriver while you take another one and push downward downward on that spiked wheel and uh, that tightens or pushes the brakes apart which tightens it to the drum and these are the two tools that I'm going to use to do that one is a long flathead drive screwdriver which I will come in at this angle to do just start here and push up which is essentially taking the wheel and turning it downwards. And I will use the short one here to go in here. Let me see if I can show you this part. Let me get it. Okay. See how I'm pushing it out of the way? That's how you do it. And you go in the same hole with the long screwdriver to flip the wheel. I can't do that and hold the camera. There's no place under the fifth wheel to put the camera this close. So I'm going to do that now without you. <laughs> Got brake adjusting in the back. That can get to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. But um, while you have your brake assembly off, go in from the back there and try it. And uh, try it to manipulate it and you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. It's really not that hard um, to do at all. Um, so give it a try 
and uh, if you need to uh, bring a shop light especially in the daytime so you can see the wheel better because the cavity is behind those two slots can uh, can be dark as you kind of don't want to be shooting in the dark you want to see what you're doing but um, that's pretty much it I will go ahead and torque these down with the torque wrench and then that's one down and three to go